Welcome back to Cody's Auto Diagnostics. Today we are going to be talking about the power probe and why disconnecting a component as far as a fuel pump, a, a fan, and checking for power and ground with the tip of this can lead you down the wrong path. because it is not doing a loaded circuit test. There are some power probes, like this one for example, and the hook, that do their version of a loaded circuit test. I've ran into some issues with this power probe loaded circuit test. To me, it seems that it is super sensitive and it gives you a fail at times when the circuit's good. There's no problems with the circuit. So let's dive in, let's take a look. A decade box hooked up. I also have it hooked up to the multimeter, okay? so. With this box, we can add in our own resistance. This box is, it's accurate to 1%. So if you can see it right now, it's showing 0.17 ohms. It's a, it's a $30 box off Amazon. These boxes can be a couple hundred dollars. I just went with a cheap one. So that being said, let's add in four ohms, okay? Four ohms, let's do 300 ohms. I don't know if you guys can see that. 300 ohms. So this box, we can add whatever ohms that we want to. That's 30,000 ohms, so 30 kilo ohms. Do 200 ohms. So it follows along with whatever switch that we select. So Power Probe has their own loaded circuit test and it's called the Hot Shot. Okay, now this Hot Shot has burned me in the past. To me, I think it's too sensitive. If, if I check the, the wire integrity by using this Hot Shot and it gives me a fail, I'm gonna be double checking it with a test light or another source. Uh, I, I don't have that much faith in it. And this is why. We already know there is no switches hit on this decade box. We have power coming in and then this is the output. Showing 12.4, right? Now let's do, if you guys can see that, we're gonna do the hot shot test. Turn this thing off. It's asking, so once this is hooked up and you have the hot shot selected, it's asking you to press the negative button. So I will press that on here. Comes up, check connection. All right, fair enough. Maybe it's just that tool. Let's do the same thing with the hook. So this is, this is what shows up when you first hook up the hook. This button right here, the far right, is the hot shot. Let's do the same test. So we have power coming in, no resistance coming out, or very, very, very little. So we have the power coming in. I'm gonna turn this off, turn off the noise. Power coming in. Press the hot shot. Hot shot fail. So what that is saying is Power Probe's version of loading the circuit, they have, there has to be some logic built into these probes. But right now it is saying that this circuit is a fail when 
I don't feel that this circuit is a fail. This is another reason why a power probe going up to a circuit or going up to a component, disconnecting the fuel pump, and you're checking for power and you're checking for ground, how these are misleading. So right now, no resistance. Watch this, watch the red positive. So this red positive will not show power if there is enough resistance in the wires to where the tip voltage and the battery voltage are different. So I'm going to come here, 400 ohms. Let's just turn the beeper on so you can hear it. 40 ohms. 40 ohms, it's saying that it is still good. Let's go to 300 ohms. 300 ohms. So you have a fuel pump. You disconnect the connector and you go up to it. You're not able to do a proper voltage drop test because the fuel pump windings are, are open, whatever it may be. Obviously doing a voltage drop test is the preferred method. So, but I see so many guys, so many guys that think that checking power and ground with a power probe is sufficient. And I'm, I'm going to sit here and tell you and show you it's not. All right. So again, we're back on here. Let's go to 1000 ohms. 1000 ohms power probe saying it's good. Okay. So 3000 ohms, 3000 ohms. It's saying it's still good. Let's go to 10,000 ohms, 10,000 ohms of resistance. If you're just disconnecting the fuel pump and going in and you have resistance in the positive or the negative wires and you are just checking power or you are just checking ground without properly loading that circuit, you're, you're misdiagnosing the vehicle. So let's do this again. Let's go 20,000 ohms. Okay. 20,000 ohms is where it does not register anymore. Let's take this off. Let's go direct to the battery and do the hot shot test again. Okay. Normal connection. Now onto the, now onto the box, same test. Press the negative, check connection. So it shows you right now that checking powers and grounds just with the power probe with the, with the component disconnected is misleading. It's also telling us that doing the hot shot test can also be misleading. The power probe absolutely has its place in the automotive industry. Absolutely. You check fuses. That's the first thing I'm going to ask. It seems silly, right? Me asking them that. Yes, I've checked the powers. I've checked the grounds. I've checked the fuses. Okay. How, how did you check? the powers. How did you check the grounds? How did you even check the fuses? Let me give you an example. Even the fuses, not loading the circuit properly and just checking the fuses with a power probe. I've had a car checking the fuses on one fuse, both sides showed power. Good fuse, right? So I continue on with the diagnostics. You know, it takes me a minute and things just weren't adding up and everything because the fuse is good, but it wasn't adding up. I grab my test light, go do the same thing on the same fuse. I have power on one side, nothing on the other. Why is that? There's current running through. I have current because I'm using a test light and it's loading that circuit. That fuse was blown, but there was enough contact making it to where the power probe was registering that. And that's exactly what we were showing right now 
by adding the resistance of that decade box. It's still showing battery positive. It's still showing that circuit is good by using the tip voltage, not using the hot shot. And not every power probe does, does the hot shot. So the loaded circuit test for the power probe, super sensitive. Misleading. Checking tip voltage at a component, again, misleading. This can send you into a whole world of hurt on your diagnostic process. All right. So I have, just to recap what's going on here, I have battery power coming in to the box. No switches added, no resistance added, and you can see that test light is nice and bright. Sticker's coming off. You can see that test light is nice and bright. Now we're gonna add we're going to add some resistance and you're going to watch the light to see if you can tell if it's dropping. Okay. Obviously this is, it, it, test lights are a good test because you are actually loading that circuit much better than using the power probe, right? Okay. So right now I am going to add four ohms of resistance. Did you see a change? I mean, a little bit, just because we can compare the two. But the thing is, if I had this hooked up to ground and I'm going to check power and I plug this in, I'm, call I'm calling it good, okay? Even though there's four ohms of resistance, you cannot to me, I can't see that. Let's go 10 ohms of resistance. Okay, 10 ohms of resistance. That's, man, it, to me, it's still nice and bright. I know my eyesight's not as good as it used to be. By obviously hitting the switch, you can see the difference in it. But if you're going directly to the fuel pump, and you're plugging that in, I, honestly, I, I probably would call that good. I'm not gonna see. I'm not gonna see that. To me, that that is still nice and bright. I mean, it's getting there. So let's go 20 ohms. It's definitely definitely dimmer. I would start. I would start questioning at 20 ohms. Not as bright as I think it should be, but it's still pretty, still pretty bright. Now you go to 30 ohms, big difference, 40 ohms. Okay, now you start seeing 100 ohms, 200 ohms, light goes out. So you can see how that loaded circuit test already beats the power probe okay good to know all right you can we can do the same thing with a higher amperage test light this is 140 milliamps while my little one was 100 milliamps okay both both pretty low amperage We'll go right off the bat to 20. I mean, yeah, you can see it when I'm, yeah, you can see it. It's drawn more amps because it is a bigger bulb. You can see it at 20. Now plug that in. Would you call that good? It's hard to say. Obviously you can see that because I'm hitting the switch, the difference. Okay. Now, 
This looks a little bit different than I'm sure what most of you guys have or if you've seen them before, but this is this is the Load Pro. Mine is, like I said, it's a little bit different. Mine is the test light. From my understanding, they're both made by Daniel Su Daniel or Daniel <laughs> Daniel Daniel Sullivan. Smart dude. Okay? Smart dude. I bought these eight years ago, around eight years ago. I, I thought it was the coolest thing I have ever seen because you can hook this into your meter and you can grab, you can disconnect that fuel pump. You can hook it into the ground side, you can hook it into the power side and you can press this button right here. And for that moment in time, it loads that circuit and you watch your meter. You have 12.5 volts, let's say, and you press this button and that voltage significantly drops. The problem with that thing is it's the leads are so big. They're so big. They want you to disconnect the connector, stuff these large pins into that connector or put in back probe and pins. I mean, to, to put both of these in, to hold it, to watch the meter and then press the button, you need three hands. And what they, what the instructions for the Load Pro says is disconnect the connector, example, fuel pump, disconnect the connector, hook these in to the power and the ground and then press this button. These things are huge, huge. I don't know what connector you're going to get for these to, I mean, you, you start probing these into a connector, you're, you're opening, you're causing more issues. You're opening that, you're opening the terminals. I mean, obviously you don't want to stuff them in there, but it's real hard to hold the, hold a connector, pro, probe these in, and then hit the switch. It, like I said, you need three hands. It, it's, it's super awkward. They would make these kind of tips make life a whole lot easier. So, okay, so right now we are just going to be testing, let's say, the power circuit. Okay, so you probe it in, got 12.43, hit the switch, 12.36, that's with no resistance added to the box. Okay, that would be, that's a, that's a good circuit. It's going to drop because it is, it is loading that circuit, simulating a load, no voltage drop. So same test, 12.43, we have 4 ohms of resistance. didn't drop much I mean that's four ohms of resistance not that bad okay so that's four ohms of resistance let's go up to the 10 ohms of resistance 12 12.43 11.2 12 11.2 if you were probing both of these into a connector and you saw that kind of drop, you don't, they tell you because you don't know if it's the power or the ground. So then it says to move the ground to a known good ground, redo that test. So if you hook that up to a known good ground like it is and you redo that test and you still have a drop, it's in the power circuit. Okay. So. Let's go up to 40 ohms of resistance. 40 ohms of resistance, hit it, 8.25. So I've made a test light. 
This is a dual filament test light. It's got a high setting and a low setting. So two different amperages. Every single one of my test lights, I put banana jacks on. What's nice about putting the banana jacks onto the test lights, these are the, these are the male banana jacks that, I've, that I have on all my test lights, or a majority of them. Comes in super convenient. This is 3357 dual filament bulb. Whoops, and it broke. With a pigtail, like I said, I added these stackable banana jacks on it. All right, so right now, I've got battery voltage gonna be coming into the box on this terminal right here. The resistance coming out goes to the meter, also goes to the bulb. So with no resistance, we can see we have 12 volts. That is, this is the lower setting of the dual filament bulb. So I'll bypass the box real quick so you can see. That's as bright as it gets on with that filament. 12.15 all right that's that's a known good okay that's known good now let's hook it up through the box I need to be careful because this box does get hot start smoking I have a backup box but pay attention to the meter as I add the resistance I'm only gonna add four ohms of resistance See that drop? 12.6 to 11.2. Almost a volt. I mean, that's only four ohms. Let's just do one ohm of resistance. One ohm of resistance, 11.55. All right, so let's go to 10 ohms of resistance. 7.86. This is probably where it's gonna smoke my box, but we'll see what we can get out of it real quick. Okay, that's known good. All right, bypass the box, 11.34. That's good. So that is the drop for that bulb to run. Box is already starting to smoke. Let's just go 10 ohms. I just wanna show you guys real quick before 10 ohms of resistance, bulbs barely on, and we just drop to 2.4 volts. Whew, that thing is smoking. All right, let's do, nah, I don't really wanna go any higher because it's gonna smoke it even worse. But my case in point is, I mean, with 10 ohms of resistance, you're gonna see it. What's nice is you can leave this six dollars. I mean, six bucks that I have to make this. You don't need to add the sheathing. You don't. I mean, it's a thirty-three fifty-seven with a pigtail. Add those stackable banana jacks on it. Put your meter leads into the back of them. You're you're doing your own voltage drop. You're doing the, the your own voltage drop. You cannot see, don't look at the meter. Look at just the, just the bulb, four ohms of resistance. And that's still pretty bright. If I plug that into a, to a fuel pump, let's say, to me, that not knowing that it should be that bright, it, it's hard to say. I mean, and that's only four ohms. So that's where test lights, can be misleading as well. I mean, 
you want the best of both worlds. You want to be able to load the circuit. You want to be able to see the voltage drop, which you can't do with this. It's super sensitive. If you can make a tool for five, six dollars that can help benefit other people, I mean that that that's that's awesome. You know that the Load Pro, great idea. Super awkward to use. So doing these tests, I'm pretty happy with the homemade homemade test light. Honestly, the homemade test light, you can start to see the voltage drop at four ohms. Not necessarily with the bulb brightness but you can see it drop you start going higher than that like the 10 ohms you, you can when you went 10 ohms what was it seven volts with the test light yeah so that that's pretty quick and easy i mean that that is maybe it's something that can help you guys um diagnose the vehicles load the circuit be able to still have your hands free and perform your own voltage drop now the thing is if you have a blower motor that's working or you have a fuel pump that's working the best uh, wire integrity test you can do is a voltage drop you want to have that circuit loaded and check the voltage drop across the, the power in the ground can't do that if let's say the pumps no good to go over there you know yeah I verified power and ground with this that it's not gonna do it right on the other note to go to the same circuit and to use that that hot shot for the power probes loaded circuit test that is so sensitive that it too can send you on a wild goose chase. Six dollar part, little bit of time. I think you can see it a little bit better. This is an ever growing industry that is always changing, right? And when it comes to electronics and stuff, I, I, I see guys that have been doing this for pretty long time that think checking fuses checking powers checking grounds with tip voltage from a power probe is not gonna do it on the same note doing those same tests with a test light is not gonna do it, it there is such controversy in the industry you know between the load pro between the power probe between the loaded circuit test everybody has their their go-to what they what they use I have my go-to that I use and like I said it was the power probe because it was quick and easy I would do the hot shot test it burned burned me a couple too many times that you know there has to be another strategy I do not like using the load pro or my test light made by daniel sullivan and that's besides the point uh, great idea on the tool personally i don't care for it just because it is big it's bulky it's really hard to hold a connector really hard to probe the the terminals really hard to hit the button it just, just doesn't work for me okay so i was trying to come up with a alternative for me, I'm going to play around with this a little bit more and hopefully this is the, this solves my needs for what I need. Hopefully this helps somebody else out there. Maybe understanding that checking a power and ground with a, with a power probe, it's not sufficient. Even doing the loaded circuit tests that are provided on some of the power probes can lead you in a misdiagnosis, but then also looking at the brightness of the light on the test lights that can be misleading as well you know the proper way to do it is that voltage drop across across the load 
that's it you know so thanks for watching guys I really do appreciate it please like subscribe hit the bell notification uh, try to put some more of these videos out not necessarily on this but I can't I mean I'll put more out on this let me know give me some feedback what you guys would like to see more scope use uh, toolbox tour I whatever just give me some material and we, we can kind of go from there I hope to build this channel to be a decent to be a decent channel but like I said I'm still learning so you have negative feedback let, let me hear it I'm I'm all ears I want to know where I've messed up where I can improve and that's it man I mean it's it's an ever-growing field and I just want to grow with the rest of you guys so Again, thank you for watching. Talk to you later. Diagnose the vehicles, load the circuit, be able to still have your hands free, and perform your own voltage drop. Now, the thing is, if you have a blower motor that's working or you have a fuel pump that's working, the best uh, wire integrity test you can do is a voltage drop. You want to have that circuit loaded and check the voltage drop across the, the power in the ground. Can't do that if, let's say, the pump's no good. You know, yeah, I verified power and ground with this. That It's not going to do it, right? On the other note, to go to the same circuit and to use that that hot shot for the power probes loaded circuit test that is so sensitive that it too can send you on a wild goose chase six dollar part little bit of time And when it comes to electronics and stuff, I, I, I see guys that have been doing this for a pretty long time that think checking fuses, checking powers, checking grounds with tip voltage from a power probe is not going to do it. On the same note, doing those same tests with a test light is not going to do it. it there is such controversy in the industry, you know, between the load pro, between the power probe, between the loaded circuit test. Everybody has their their go to what they what they use. I have my go to that I use, and like I said, it was the power probe because it was quick and easy. I'd do the hot shot test. It burned burned me a couple too many times that you know there has to be another strategy. I do not like using the load pro or my test light very idea on the tool personally I don't care for it just because it is big it's bulky it's really hard to hold a connector really hard to probe the the terminals really hard to hit the button there's guys that swear by it awesome sweet it's just, it just doesn't work for me okay so I was trying to come up with an alternative. For me, I, I'm going to play around with this a little bit more, and hopefully, this is the this solves my needs for what I need. Hopefully, this helps somebody else out there. Maybe understanding that checking a power and ground with a with a power probe, it's not sufficient. Even doing the loaded circuit tests that are provided on some of the power probes can lead you in a misdiagnosis but then also looking at the brightness of the light on the test lights that can be misleading as well you know the proper way to do it is that voltage drop across across the load that's it you know so thanks for watching guys I really do appreciate it please like subscribe hit the bell notification uh, try to put some more of these videos out not necessarily on this but I can't. I mean, I'll put more out on this. Let me know. Give me some feedback what you guys would like to see.